Among the tourists and bustling downtown streets of Kenora, Ontario, are the unhoused. Those living on the streets say they feel shamed by the rest of the community, making it difficult to access basic needs like housing and medical care. APTN News met with people experiencing issues firsthand. But what brought us here was the overdose deaths of multiple people in just eight weeks. 24-year-old Benjamin Littletree O'Cheek died on January 19th this year. He was a really nice kid, though. Like, he really looked after the underdogs. He was an incredible athlete. His mother, Marguerite Hunt, lives in Victoria, B.C. She says she spoke with her son five days before he died, but found out about his death through Facebook. Hunt says Little Tree moved back to Kenora with family in 2019 before living on the streets. He came into the world with a lot of trauma. Um, unfortunately, his dad and I were both 60 scoopers, and I feel like now that I had to sit with everything and sit with his death, looking back on who he was as a little person and how he had to deal with two parents that had no idea how to really self-regulate their, their own trauma. She says racism and intergenerational trauma led to Little Tree facing addictions, then homelessness. It's our country's inherent racism towards Aboriginal people and um, not just Aboriginal people, but addicts, people in poverty. Canada just really um, wants to just hide that away. We're friendly here, we're kind, but we don't want to talk about the history. Kenora, Ontario Provincial Police responded to Little Tree's death. He was found unresponsive behind the ticket booth for MS Kenora, a local tourist boat that operates in the summer. OPP said it was a sudden death and deemed non-suspicious. This is around the 67th or 68th um, friend that has passed away from addiction. Miranda Elder is a peer support worker with Kenora Moving Forward. The not-for-profit organization sounded the alarm on the deaths over Facebook, saying five happened in eight weeks and went unnoticed by most of the community. It feels like we're all living in like a Russian roulette type situation where we never know who's going to be next. I really hope that these deaths in Kenora don't go unnoticed. These were people that could have had a future, had somebody addressed their trauma and treated them like they weren't a problem. The deaths have prompted an outcry for change. But really, people are using this street as their housing. Advocates say first and foremost, housing or some sort of shelter is needed in Kenora. So many deaths that could have been prevented already. Right? In our next story, we hear from James Nikanapanis of Grassy Narrows, how he ended up living on the streets and his constant struggle to put a roof over his head. Now my last known fix suggest would be the Kenora District Jail or just out here on the street. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Kenora.